Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining uh, for our second talk in our spring series uh, this uh, year. Um, so today we have um, Elia Baptistelli, who is an experimental astrophysicist and cosmologist, and he's currently an associate professor in the physics department of the Sapienza University of Rome, um, where he holds the astrophysics laboratory course for third year uh, students, and he works on a uh, variety of topics, um, clusters of galaxy, the SC effect, and the polarization of the CMB. So please take it away, uh, Elia. Hello, thank you very much. So yeah, as Emily said, uh, uh, I work at Sapienza University. I work in the experimental cosmology group um, of the physics department. And today I would like to tell you about uh, the uh, a work we are carried on also with uh, uh, Mustang uh, uh, Chu, which uh, you guys know very well, uh, uh, a search and investigation of the cosmic web, a study of the cosmic web with high angular resolution. Okay, so a brief history of the universe. As you all know, uh, the universe started with the singularity. Uh, uh, followed by a decrease in temperature and uh, expansion of the universe. Uh, so the universe cools down and expands. And uh, what happens after more or less uh, three, three, 300, uh, 380,000 years after the Big Bang is that uh, electrons and uh, uh, light nuclei recouple and uh, so the cross section offered by uh, matter to radiation drops out. And so the matter and radiation basically decouple. This happens at around 3000 Kelvin. And of course, after that, radiation travels undisturbed and matter can uh, go uh, uh, to form, can go ahead to form structures. Radiation is the cosmic microwave background radiation that we all see and we study, we use to, to do our cosmology, uh, to prove our cosmology theories. A matter uh, structure, uh, matter form structures, uh, and this is uh, investigated thanks to a lot of hydrodynamical simulation, which are really key to, for, to, to give us uh, an insight about uh, the hierarchical structure formation from smaller to larger uh, structure. So as mentioned, radiation travels toward us, and uh, we can see it as a cosmic microwave background radiation. As you all know, the cosmic microwave background radiation was discovered in 1965 by Pencias and Wilson's, Wilson, which who got uh, granted about the Nobel Prize in 1978. So how is the cosmic microwave background? Well, we all know that the CMB is a perfect black body. This was a very beautiful measurement made by FIRAS experiment on board of COBE satellite in the 90s. Uh, in 2006, uh, John Matter and George Muth uh, got the Nobel Prize for Physics again for this beautiful discovery and for the first discovery of the anisotropies of the, uh, of the cosmic microwave background. So what, once we remove the monopole of the CMB, and we actually remove also the dipole, which has not uh, uh, a cosmolog cosmological origin, what we are left with are this beautiful image. Uh, this is a Planck uh, image of the tiny anisotropies of the CMB. Again, this prediction was done by few uh, important physicists, in, physicists including uh, Jim Peebles, uh, who got granted uh, of the Nobel Prize in Physics in, 19, in 2019. So this beautiful picture was done by, with Planck, uh, which, uh, and I think it's, it's an amazing uh, picture of the tiny anisotropies. Let's zoom out uh, a little bit uh, about this. Uh, so you can see the uh, anisotropies at around uh, one uh, degree angular scales. And this is an area, a patch of 30 times 22 square degrees uh, CMB map, mainly from the 150 gigahertz channel of Planck. Now let's see what happens if we increase the angular resolution of this. This is what uh, happens. You see, 
uh, this is not your glasses that uh, is uh, uh, clean. It is, is a real uh, improve. I can swap from uh, up and down. Plank, higher angle resolution. Plank, higher angle resolution. So this higher angle resolution was obtained with uh, Plank plus ACT, Atacama Cosmology Telescope. This is the data release for, and you can see very much better the structures that you see in the in the in the uh, in the CMB. You can see the primary anisotopies, which are this blob uh, one degree angular scales, but you can also see a uh, very tiny uh, structures. These, for instance, uh, are uh, submillimeter infrared galaxies that just happen to be in the field that you are observing. And in fact, uh, these uh, uh, are being studied uh, uh, in uh, in many in many papers. This is not the only um, evidence we have in this map. Another important evidence is the blue dots. So the previous one were red dots, which means uh, with respect to the average temperature, they were positive, you know. The blue dots are negative signal, are negative signs. What are these negative signs? Well, these are galaxy clusters. This is the cosmic microwave background as seen in backlight through the electron of galaxy clusters. This is the Sunai Zedovich effect, which I would like to tell you a little bit about in the next few slides. So what is the Sunai Zedovich effect? The Sunai Zedovich effect is the interaction of the uh, CMB low energy photons uh, with uh, hot electrons in galaxy clusters. Uh, hot electrons because of uh, uh, of the potential wells we have in galaxy clusters and uh, so what happens is that uh, cmb photons undergo inverse compton scattering and basically they get a burst in uh, uh, in the frequency spectrum of the uh, of the cmb this is basically what happens can you see my my, my mouse yes you can okay so the cmb is the blue uh, spectrum when they go through a, a, a hot electron gas in, C, in, in galaxy cluster, they get burst to higher energy and they become the red curve you have here. So this spectrum, the spectrum of this effect is basically to a first approximation, a universal spectrum. And the quantity that describe the intensity of the spectrum is this Comptonization parameter that I uh, described here. So this is a spectral distortion whose entity depends on the y parameter, which is proportional to the integral along the line of sight of the electron density times the electron temperature. So it's linear in electron density and linear in electron temperature. So if you now make the difference between the blue line, the, between the red curve and the blue curve, what you get is this spectrum, which has a negative part below 217 gigahertz, a negative part between 217 gigahertz, we are in the millimetric range, and the positive part above 217 gigahertz. So this is a, a Sunaizidovich effect, which is negative with compared to the average temperature of the CMB at this frequency. So if you observe at 150 gigahertz or at 90 gigahertz, which is the frequency at which Mustang Chu observes, you see a negative signal. That's why you saw blue spots in the CMB map I showed before. So the same electrons, hot electrons, relativistic electrons, can be studied not only with this uh, Sunaizidovich effect, but also with the bram strahlung emission. However, the dependence of the electron uh, density of the bram strahlung emission with respect to the electron density is a dependence to the square of the electron density and the dependence on the uh, square root of the electron temperature. Again, this is integrated along the line of sight. So the difference or the dependence of this uh, effect uh, with respect to the uh, Sunaizidovich effect has allowed many analyses, for instance, uh, determination of the distance of the galaxy, determination of the Hubble constant, and so on and so forth. In addition, this is uh, an effect that uh, can allow you to sample, to indicate, to study galaxy clusters down to lower density. So how do we study galaxy clusters with the Sunaizidovich effect? 
Well, the wide majority of uh, the sunesid of which effect is indeed in uh, um, galaxy clusters. This is an image by Chandra, X-ray emission. This is an image uh, uh, optical of a galaxy cluster. And these are three images of three different clusters that uh, uh, have three different, very different redshift. So one of the important uh, point of the sunesid of which effect is is that being a um, fractional change, it is also redshift independent. So you can uh, in study galaxy cluster without basically knowing at which redshift they, they are. So this has been uh, used, for instance, to build this uh, beautiful uh, plot where you do a, basically a number count of galaxy cluster as a function of the redshift. This is a collection of thousands of galaxy clusters detected by Planck, by South Pole Telescope, and by Atacama Cosmology Telescope. This is the data release five. This was used, for instance, to is used to understand the, the uh, equation of state of dark energy and the interplay of matter with respect to uh, dark energy. This was uh, done uh, in order to uh, 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 studying the bulk motion of the galaxy cluster, so basically de detecting galaxy cluster as one object. Of course, uh, we can do more. We can uh, use uh, the Sunaizidovich effect uh, to uh, study the astrophysics of galaxy clusters, for, for instance, to study the relativistic effect, uh, to study non-relaxed clusters, because not all the clusters are uh, uh, not all the clusters uh, are relaxed. Um, some of them are just undergoing uh, merging effects, uh, non-thermal effects, and stuff like this. This is, for instance, the science that is being carried out by two experiments, mainly two experiments all around the world. One is Mustang and Mustang Chu at the GBT that you guys know very well. And uh, the other one is Nika Chu at the, uh, in Iran. Mustang Chu works at 90 gigahertz and uh, from a 100 meters telescope, while Nikachu works at 150 gigahertz and 220 gigahertz from a 32 meter telescope. This is allowing to study, as I mentioned, going inside the clusters and study the physics of the clusters. For instance, understanding a relation and collisional merging clusters, yeah. Uh, yeah. studying uh, the uh, pressure profiles of galaxy clusters, also, point sources are being uh, studied with uh, Mustang Chu, and uh, um, also the feedback of AGN uh, uh, in in galaxy clusters uh, electrons is something that is being uh, is being studied. Another important uh, point is uh, that uh, when a galaxy cluster merge within each other, they dissipate an enormous quantity of energy. And this can be seen through the pressure because the Sunaizidovich effect samples the pressure of the uh, uh, in, in galaxy clusters. In addition, even in pre-merging clusters, we could try to detect cosmic web. Cosmic web is the structure that we think uh, uh, is uh, present in our, in our universe at, uh, in the dots of which galaxy cluster are seated. So galaxy clusters are a fascinating science we can do, but we want to go beyond galaxy cluster. That's, that's our goal. So the baryon distribution in our universe is still an open issue for modern cosmologists. Uh, we can only see uh, more or less half of the baryons. Half of the baryons are still missing from our uh, census. Uh, we know that uh, from magneto uh, hydrodynamical simulation uh, that predictions of these missing baryons uh, mainly reside in a filamentary structure at the temperature of 10 to the 5, 10 to the 7 Kelvin. And these uh, uh, form the so-called WIM, warm hot intergalactic medium. Um, simulation can test indeed the, the structure formation and the interplay between the matter, dark matter, and the dark energy. So, as I mentioned, the WIM are expected to be distributed uh, as uh, um, over density in the filamentary structure between galaxy cluster and uh, in 
regions where the density of electrons is uh, uh, lower is lower than galaxy galaxy clusters. As I mentioned, these electrons can be studied both with the Sunayi effect, and this is the dependence of the Sunayi effect again by the electron density and the electron temperature and the line of sight and with Bremsstrahlung emission. And this is the dependence of the Bremsstrahlung on the uh, electron density, on the temperature and the line of sight. As you see, in certain circumstances where the density is low enough, the Sunavis the Dovich effect is uh, more powerful with respect to with the Bremsstrahlung. In particular, if you study galaxy cluster and you go in the outskirts, of the galaxy cluster, at a certain point, the X ray reached the confusion uh, limit, while the Sunayi-Jedovich effect can go uh, up down to lower uh, lower uh, density. Okay, so this is the cluster pair that uh, uh, we have chosen. Uh, we have chosen for the proposal of Mustang Chu, and we have chosen to observe with the Atacama Cosmology Telescope. So filaments have already been seen statistically, and some low uh, and some low uh, signal to noise have been uh, observed also on, on the individual. But no firm, strong uh, filaments have been seen uh, si uh, on a single uh, on a single filament. This pair of cluster, Abel four one uh, and uh, Abel three nine nine are two clusters that are 36 minutes apart cluster, uh, which on the plane of the sky means three megaparsec. They already was were uh, uh, um, observed with the BLA and uh, already shown the radio halo uh, in, in, the, in, the, um, in, 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 in each of them, a double bed, uh, radio halo in each uh, in, in, in this in this pair. In addition, they were observed with XMM in X-ray, and they uh, have been studied and they've been seen to, be, to have no cooling flow, uh, nearly isothermal. Basically, they are well-behaved clusters, uh, which uh, uh, make uh, uh, all think that uh, they are in the pre in pre-merging phase, so they never really merge within each other. Uh, this is the ideal. Uh, laboratory test, labor laboratory uh, sample, uh, because we can test the existence of uh, filamentary structure between them uh, being in a pre-emerging state. In addition to this, uh, in, in 2019, uh, Govone et al. found a radio emission with LOFAR in the middle of the two cluster, showing that there is a relativistic electrons and magnetic field in the in the uh, in the inter cluster region between Abel 401 and Abel 399. So this is really an exciting pair of clusters that we wanted to study a little bit more. In addition to this, in 2015, Planck, with low angular resolution, of course, observed this. Well, they they they. they took this cluster pair from their map and they did uh, an analysis basically um, <clears throat> fitting their emission with the isothermal beta model. This is the data that they have found and this is the residual of the, their fit. The difference between these two is this uh, plot you see in the lower page where they basically saw that there is uh, an excess of emission an excess of electron in the middle of these galaxy clusters. Unfortunately, the detection is only two sigma, and this is mainly because of the poor angular resolution. This map is uh, at, I think, a seven arc minutes angular resolution. So we want to go more. We want to go to higher resolution. We did uh, run some uh, magnetohydrodynamical simulations. This is the uh, a pair of clusters, not the, the same pair of clusters, but a pair of clusters. Uh, at the angular resolution of uh, Planck, basically this uh, resumes what we have been observing on the Planck map. And this is uh, the same pair of clusters uh, with an angular resolution similar to what the Mustang Chu could achieve. And so and do, we do see turbulences in, in there. And so this is uh, uh, a good uh, um, uh, 
we, we were hoping to be seeing this uh, this structure in this in this cluster pair. So we did the basically two kind of observation: one with moderate uh, uh, higher angular high angular resolution with the Atacama cosmology telescope, and I'm going to describe this. And then we did the observation with Mustang Chu. So Atacama Cosmology Telescope, many of you already know it, is a, uh, is a six meter CMB telescope uh, deployed in the Atacama Desert at 5,200 uh, 5, meter aside sea level, it's very high. Uh, uh, with its six meter telescope can allow uh, from one to two arc minute angular resolution. For the map we have been considering it's uh, uh, 1.65 arc minutes, it observes at 98, 150, 220 gigahertz band. And now we also have uh, uh, an addition, two additional um, channels at 30 and 40, uh, 40 gigahertz. This is uh, the telescope itself with the ground shield. And this is the telescope from a little bit farther away. This is a nice area with, this is the area where we are building the Simons Observatory. Uh, this is most of the collaboration of the Atacama Cosmology Telescope collaboration. Um, so this is a map we have been taking from the ACT map. ACT is not a targeted instrument. You, we cannot really go and observe a target. It just happened that this cluster pair was inside the CMB map that we were uh, doing. Um, so uh, from this map is a Y map, computerization parameter map extracted from component separation of the 98, 150 and 220 gigahertz map made uh, in this paper here. The angular resolution as mentioned is 1.65 uh, arc minutes. And we have a noise which basically we extracted from this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven squared where we uh, concentrated in order to uh, study the covariance metric. Uh, we did not use these red boxes because it was uh, contaminated by infrared emission. So the green contours you see here are uh, contours at 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, 13, and 15 sigma. And this image is taken from a work that we have been doing with Adam Inks uh, uh, leading uh, and Federico Radiconi uh, leading. Um, so this is the same image, but a little bit zoom out. The um, dashed circle are is R five hundred uh, radius, both for Able four one and Able three nine nine. So we try to fit this uh, this uh, this galaxy cluster pair. We did the first fit with only two beta models on each of the two clusters. So the beta model is the famous 1976 uh, model that was proposed by Fusco Femiano and Cavaliere, uh, which still <laughs> describes pretty well the, de the density um, profile of galaxy clusters. This uh, beta model was done, so we only did the beta model for these two clusters without fitting anything inside. And uh, the, we found out that there is a tension between uh, data and, and the fit. So a second fit we uh, carried out is fitting this with the beta model for each of the cluster, plus a structure, a structure that we called MESA, because uh, it's a sort of plateau in the middle. And the fit is pretty, is pretty, uh, pretty well, uh, it fits pretty well. So we found that the, the, uh, the fit uh, yields uh, um, a detection of 5.56 sigma of a bridge structure in the middle of the two clusters um, with a Y parameter of 1.1 10 to the minus five, which is a, a big, a big number. So uh, this is the same model where we add back the, uh, the MESA. So this is basically our bridge in the middle of the two clusters. So we removed only the cluster pairs. Total mass is 3.3, 10 to the 14 uh, solar masses. And uh, we also did a model uh, where we, uh, um, a geometrical model where we basically extracted that the total separation between the two clusters is not three megaparsec 
as in the plane on the sky, but they are ma mainly aligned and yielding a 12 megaparsec uh, distance. So this uh, same uh, uh, model was uh, uh, again uh, managed and analyzed by Federico. We just for showing purposes, we did the one dimensional slide across crossing the center of the galaxy clusters. And this is what we get. So the two clusters are pretty well fitted and we see evidence and necessity for a mesa in the middle of the two uh, clusters. So the parameters uh, are shown in this slide. We made a comparison of the Planck only model where we do see a mesa but at low significance and the ACT plus Planck model where we do uh, see a mesa. We did all different kind of tests with the elliptical beta with no bridge, with the circular beta with the, uh, with the mesa, elliptical beta with the mesa was the fit that uh, satisfied us the most. And we also did the comparison between uh, models uh, and uh, uh, we, we ran a test where we basically extracted the information whether indeed this extra mesa uh, mod, uh, extra mesa structure was indeed a uh, necessity, and this is called the Akaika information criterion. The information uh, that we got from this uh, is that uh, um, we do need a mesa in the middle of these galaxy clusters. So these are just uh, contour posteriors uh, uh, extracted from uh, mass, uh, Monte Carlo Markov chain uh, fit that were run uh, by Federico. Okay, so this was really uh, encouraging uh, but of course we wanted more we wanted more and we wanted to go to higher angular resolution so we basically applied for mustan chu uh, well that, i don't really need to present mustan chu mustan chu is this millimetric camera uh, 223 uh, feed or copper transition and sensors working at 90 gigahertz uh, as a field of view of 4.25 arc minutes uh, and there's an angular resolution, an amazing angular resolution of nine arc second. This is the highest angular resolution of this kind ever built. So it's a structure. You see this uh, pulse tube <laughs> refrigerator, which works at uh, uh, inclined on better when it is uh, uh, when uh, when the cryostat looks at for, at fifty degrees. Um, and this, of course, a facility instrument, so you can apply. Uh, for uh, for observation. It was built in Penn State uh, University. Okay, so this is one of the map we extracted from this uh, uh, from this cluster pair. This is not published uh, and uh, does not cover the whole region, only cover the Able for one, the bridges, uh, the bridge uh, part and Able 399 is outside this map. This is 44 hour observation on source. So the first thing we did was checking point sources. We have a bunch of point sources, around 10, and we compared to uh, models. Uh, and the, mo the comparison is, uh, uh, is working pretty well. Again, this is not published yet, but uh, uh, we're gonna publish soon. Uh, the second part of the analysis we did, we included this map in the Inks et al. paper where we did see the uh, the detection uh, of the bridge at uh, moderate angular resolution and we try to see if there were fluctuations we try to see the, if there were um, turbulence so we analyzed this data in an aggressive way basically with this midas uh, pipeline you can you remove most of the uh, large scale fluctuation unfortunately you remove also large scale uh, structure in the uh, in the sky uh, and we found that uh, from this delta y over y map, we saw that uh, uh, we could see some low level term, uh, turbulence detector, which were not uh, related to noise, uh, but we couldn't see major merger activity. So this is in a way reassuring that uh, we did uh, uh, that the model we um, uh, based our analysis about uh, this cluster pair being pre-merging uh, is uh, is uh, um, is confirmed. Uh, so, in addition to this, we also analyze this map with another pipeline, which retrieves uh, 
large scales. This is what we really need, and we need to improve a little bit on this. This is called mean CASI, uh, uh, and it's based on a sky model. That's why we needed some data to work it out. So in this pipeline, again, this is not published. Uh, we have a clear detection available for one. And again, we see that uh, this is more or less relaxed despite, despite some debate in literature. Uh, possibly there are minor mergers in these galaxy clusters. Uh, we also saw that uh, this, uh, and we also see a hint of the of this of, of the bridge in the in the in the lower part. So this is again the act map. Uh, we also notice that uh, this uh, bridge structure uh, has some uh, uh, peculiarities. Um, as mentioned in the Mustang should map, we did not map uh, Abel 399. So what are the peculiarities? Well, let's first see what uh, we can uh, try to do with additional data from Mustanchu. Uh, hydrodynamical simulation, as we mentioned, are predict, uh, predict turbulences uh, down to a little bit lower than y 10 to the minus five. Uh, this, was, uh, this is uh, again the same simulation which I showed before, uh, Planck resolution, act resolution, Mustanchu resolution. Um, we have predictions of uh, the fact that uh, um, of the scale at which uh, variants depart from dark matter di distribution. This is an important prediction. This happens at uh, angular scales from 0.7 to 7 megaparsec. And uh, uh, it's a clear signature. It's a clear prediction from this paper here by Nabila, Arganim, and other uh, colleagues. And so we can see this structure, this uh, 0.7 megaparsec uh, with uh, uh, one at minute uh, resolution in sky, if the model we predicted from Inx et al is valid. And uh, we are able to see this. Uh, we will be able to see this if we have higher uh, additional information. In addition to this, even in non uh, cluster pair, this is an analysis done on coma with Planck date. Of course, coma is very close by and everything is larger, but they basically see below uh, R500 uh, at angular scales of the order of 0.4 to 1 megaparsec uh, turbulences that uh, we hope to see at the level of 10 to the minus 5 in Y, but that we hope to see uh, in uh, in uh, in, in this cluster pair. So uh, this, all these fluctuations range before, between 0.3 and 0.9, 10 to the minus 5. And this is really uh, uh, exciting to be able to see these turbulences with high angular resolution uh, in, in this cluster pair. So this cluster pair, uh, these this scales correspond to a, a fraction of arc minutes, as I mentioned, which uh, basically uh, is the angular scales that we can uh, see with Mustang. But we have some additional uh, considerations we want to do on this. Well, the, field, the first of all, the, the, this bridge, this mesa, seems to be shifted toward uh, Able 401. Why is this? We don't really understand this. Actually, we do have an hypothesis. Uh, Able 401 is larger than 399, and this could be uh, a, a peculiar um, uh, characteristic of cluster pair that uh, should be, however, proven. Another important point is that there seems to be structure around the ABLE 399. So either ABLE 399 is not that relaxed or there is some structure on the connection between ABLE 399 and the bridge itself. So also we don't, we are not 100% sure how the, this MESA is connected to 401. Basically, all these requires additional data of this part of the uh, structure of the of the map here and of the of Abel 399. With this data in hand, we can finally finalize our analysis of the Mustanchu data and uh, uh, hopefully answer to these uh, to these questions. This can be done with this new uh, pipeline, Minkasi, which was developed by John Sievers uh, and Charles Romero. Uh, 
So this is not uh, uh, like MIDAS, which basically filters out everything above a certain frequency. This is a pipeline that in theory can retrieve turbulence and can retrieve angular scales larger even of the field of view. Of course, you need the sky model to, to, to allow you to do this. So it's a maximum likelihood method, which does not high pass filters as we did with MIDAS. So this, this plot shows the coperture we have. This is Able 401. This is the structure between Able 401 and the bridge, which is poorly covered. And of course, the zero coverage we have on the Able 399. So we want to increase this coperture down to here and to have, to have a coperture on 399. Uh, on 399. So this is basically what uh, I had in mind for this uh, for this talk. Of course, there are a lot of questions uh, open. If I still have five minutes, I ask Emily if I still have them. I could uh, tell you a little bit about a separate project we have carried out uh, carried on in Italy, uh, experimental project. Yeah, we have about five minutes, so that okay. Works. Five minutes. Five minutes is perfect. Okay, so let me just uh, tell you a little bit about Mistral. What is Mistral? Mistral is uh, uh, the acronym for Millimeter Rad Sardine Radio Telescope Receiver based on array of lumped element gits. So the Sardine Radio Telescope is a, a 64 meter telescope based in Sardinia, in the island of Sardinia, which uh, is uh, um, fit for uh, up to 115 gigahertz measurements, so up to the millimetric. Uh, so ENAF manages, uh, the, the, the National Institute of Astrophysics in Italy manages this telescope and opens open the call for building a camera, uh, a millimetric camera uh, that could be, go, could go, a facility camera that could go at the focus of this, uh, uh, of this, uh, of this, of this telescope. So the uh, relevant people, uh, key people are shown here. And uh, um, so we, we applied and we got this, uh, this possibility to, to build this camera. So this is the turret where the receivers, all the receivers uh, sit. And this is Mistral. So what is Mistral? Mistral is this red uh, cylinder here. It's a, a pulse tube cooled receiver. Uh, with uh, a helium-10 fridge. Helium-10 is not a strange isotope of helium, it's just a combination of helium-4, helium-3, helium-3. So there are three fridges that allow to cool down our detectors at 0.25 uh, Kelvin. Uh, this cryostat is being manufactured and is actually today is now cold and being tested right now in, in Cardiff. So why I'm showing this load curve? So one of the problems we faced, maybe some of you are uh, familiar with this, was to run a pulse tube cryocooler uh, with uh, very long helium lines. We needed 120 meter lines. So uh, we, we knew that Mustang Chu does it. We knew that there are other projects in China do it, but uh, we checked with Cryomac and Sumitomo and nobody could really certify this. Uh, that this could work. So we basically went to Sardinia and did the test ourselves. And this is the test that we did. We did, we did three tests, one with the uh, normal 40 meter line, which is this black curve. The low curve, the power dissipator does not uh, damage the, the temperature, uh, which stays basically always below four Kelvin, which is the, the temperature you want it to be. Then we did a very aggressive test with 215 meter. So it could still work, but only with the power dissipation of 0.2. Above this, we don't really have a chance to have it, uh, to have it working. So uh, then the third test, which is uh, um, the test we think is uh, uh, consistent with what we will have in Sardinia, was done with uh, 120 meter lines. And we found that with the 0.5, uh, what, which is the kind of dissipation we think we have, we will have on the first, uh, on the second stage of the pulse tube, we still are be below uh, 4.2 Kelvin. So this is good news. And so we could effectively commit ourselves to, to cool, to, to, to build this, uh, this, uh, this, uh, um, this cryostat. 
So as mentioned, Mistral will have an array of kinetic inductant detectors. Kinetic inductant detectors are superconducting resonators uh, fit for frequency domain multiplexing, uh, which basically change their uh, resonance frequency upon the change in the amount of uh, uh, Cooper pairs and quasi-particles. Basically, when radiation hits a uh, kinetic inductant detectors, it shifts the resonance frequency and you can see it both in amplitude and in phase. Uh, and so you basically can see that the, uh, that radiation has arrived. We plan to have uh, 425 kits in our array and this is the uh, first uh, uh, array uh, that we have been built. We are pretty proud of this. Uh, the field of view of Mistral will be four arc minutes and the full width and maximum of this uh, uh, of each pixel is going to be 12.2 uh, arc second. This is ensured thanks uh, to a double lens, a silicon lens that will be cooled down for Kelvin. The optical uh, uh, performance should not be um, should not degrade too much across the, the, the array going from uh, 0 0.97 to 0.91 at the edge of the uh, of the array. So here I come to my conclusion. Uh, I hope I convince you that the Sonezidovich effect is a unique uh, tool for studying galaxy cluster, but also to study beyond, to go beyond galaxy cluster to try to study cosmic web, which would really be a, a, a challenging and amazing detection. Um, we have I've shown you the the the, the, the Atacama cosmology telescope observation showing a filament. I must mention that the, we have additional uh, act uh, data. Uh, I mentioned that TACT is not a targeted instrument, but uh, we did an exception for this amazing cluster pair. So we targeted this uh, uh, cluster pair and we have an amount of data which will allow us to double the sensitivity with 1.65 uh, uh, arc minutes angular resolution. The new uh, Mustang 2 data and possibly the very new Mustang data could allow us to see turbulence in this bridge and uh, uh, have a clear image of the filament. Uh, we have carried out many other work within this, uh, let's call bridge uh, collaboration. Uh, we are carried on uh, a, a bridge census with a lot of cluster pairs uh, uh, in the in the act map, uh, stacking basically uh, them out and see how it works. Uh, also, we are carried out uh, carrying out uh, some cross correlation between Sunaizidovich effect imaging, uh, radio LOFAR images, and X-ray Im images that will allow us to shed light uh, shed light on the origin. Of of the free electron that were seen in uh, um, in uh, Govoni at all. Uh, this is a, a pretty mature draft that uh, Federico Radigoni is working on. Uh, and then I basically showed a few slides about MISA, which is the new camera that we hope we will uh, deploy in, in summer. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for the attention. Thank you very much for uh, presenting your work. So we'll take a few minutes to take any questions. Uh, please uh, raise your hand and I'll um, call on you if you have any questions. Hmm. Ilse? Yes. Please. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Oh, it's very nice result. And thank you. I'm, yeah, uh, I'm just curious. I know it's hard, but how plausible do you think it you can actually try the, the kinetics in Zeldovich effect to actually isolate whether that velocity structure is coherent, the scenario of the cosmic web. Oh, actually, this is something that we are studying. It's hard. It's hard. It depends on the angular scales where you observe, because of course the spectrum is the same as the primary anisotropies. But uh, uh, if you concentrate on uh, uh, small scales in the in the galaxy thrust, so this is uh, this is possible. We have a, a, a work going on. Um, I don't think there are results yet, but we are uh, carried out uh, carrying out this uh, uh, this uh, this work. Yes. Interesting. Thank you. Thank you.
Um, please raise your hand if you have questions. Uh, I have a few questions. So I was wondering, uh, what's the mass ratio between uh, the the Abel pair, the 399 and is it 400, 401? Okay. Uh, off the top of my head, I think uh, one is twice the other one. Okay. Oh, so it's quite, okay. Yeah. Anyway, there is a clear uh, asymmetry mm -hmm, in this mm -hmm. cluster pair, which is something that we are also seeing in this work here. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. This is very tentative, so I shouldn't really go too much into it. But uh, we seem to see, uh, let's say, a, a clear dependence and a clear um, uh, tendency of any kind of bridge to go over to go uh, uh, toward the, 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 the most massive, uh, uh, most massive uh, uh, cluster. Oh, this, if confirmed, that this this would be an amazing result that uh, we would like uh, to uh, go ahead. But uh, we are so we see this in the cluster pair Abel three nine nine four one. We see this in the bridge census uh, uh, work that we obtain by stacking uh, cluster pairs one after the other. Oh, okay, interesting. And along with that, I was wondering how many. Uh, cluster pairs are known to have bridges. It's just how many known bridges are there? Uh, only a few, actually. Only that's, a few. That's the, yeah, yeah. That's that's the the point, and that's why we are stacking galaxy cluster uh, um, pairs to try to mm -hmm. increase the signal to noise uh, in these uh, in these uh, in these structures, and maybe some of them do not have. Uh, uh, a, a, um, a bridge, but uh, you know, we will discover this in the near future, I would say. Yeah, okay, really interesting. And I had one more. So you said you were mainly looking for turbulence in the uh, bridges. What does that mainly tell you um, about the system if you see this turbulence or if you don't? Okay, basically a lot of things. So let yeah. me go. Uh, here, for instance, mm -hmm. um, turbulence. So this 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 plot shows the scale at which uh, uh, the baryons mm -hmm. uh, depart from their dark matter distribution. Mm -hmm. So it, depending on where you see the turbulence, at which angular scale you see the turbulence, you can validate models that tell you that dark matter uh, is there and the baryons sit on there up to down actually to seven uh, megaparsec or 0.7 megaparsec angular scale. And this plot is an amazing plot which we basically can prove uh, in, uh, uh, with, with data. In addition, this, the, left, the right hand side plot uh, see turbulence uh, which are mainly uh, 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 tell you that uh, this is a result of emerging activity. Mm. Merging are most of the time related to turbulence in galaxy clusters. Mm -hmm. Of course, uh, turbulence can also mean uh, um, where is that? Here, turbulence can also mean uh, you know studying pressure mm. uh, profiles, uh, studying uh, um, the AGN feedback, studying the, the basically whether a galaxy cluster pair is a mer is indeed a pre-merging or post-merging uh, structure. If you see, uh, you know, structure uh, due to uh, the enormous energy quantity uh, deployed during merging. So all this okay. this thing can be done, and of course it can be compared with models when you have uh, seen this uh, this structure. What I am uh, dreaming about is really seeing a filament uh, mm. uh, that uh, uh, can connect these two cluster pair. That uh, will be really amazing, I think. Oh, okay. Really interesting. Thanks. We have any other final questions, Jesse? Yeah. Thanks, Ilya. Um, so I was wondering if uh, you can say anything tentative, at least, about the evolution of this bridge structure? I'm not a simulation guy, just, just to <laughs> the hands uh, I had. 
having said that, uh, uh, this this is uh, um, a cluster pair that uh, is destined to merge, I guess. Uh, mm -hmm. So we we would see uh, shocks. We would see um, we would actually see uh, something very interesting in the cross correlation between uh, uh, millimetric uh, Sunaizadovich and the radio uh, radio halos. Uh, this, uh, for instance, can tell us whether the um, the electrons uh, in there are reaccelerated and there is a magnetic field that, that can re can emit a synchrotron or not so all these uh, uh, important information can be can be discovered not only from the sunaizid which effect but also from uh, uh, cross correlation with the data for i don't know lofar uh, for instance 150 megahertz uh, data for about the future yeah, I think we we could see a, a, a major emerging of this uh, this structure. Okay, thank you. Excellent. Uh, any final questions? Okay. If not, uh, thank you again for joining us and. Uh, this afternoon for telling us about your work and for coming to listen to um, this presentation. So our next colloquium will be next week by um, Andy Fox. So I uh, hope to see you all there.